and welcome back to Teacher Kenny's English for Everyone. I hope you're doing okay, guys. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the sub little bit, that subscribe button, okay? Uh, but anyhow, uh, today I thought we'd look at uh, some more word forms from two of our most powerful words, love and hate. And as you will see, as I explain a few of these, a lot of them are mostly, you know, a lot of word forms are made just for writing, you know. Um, a few of them, you know, for oral, but you'll see that a lot of them really just fit the context of uh, writing sometimes. But anyhow, uh, we'll start out with love first, and then we'll move on to hate, okay? But the, you know, the very first one would just take the word love. You know, if I say, oh man, I love you. She loves me. I love my little dog. Okay. Uh, that one's real easy. Everybody knows. That's just the root word. But since you're learning English and I don't know you, I just have to... Just go with my gut here, okay? Uh, loving. Now, if I use the word loving, let me get situated here. All right. Like uh, one sentence I had is, my parents are the most loving people in the world. All right. And if somebody's loving like that, it just means oh, everybody loves them. They love everybody. And... They are the most loving people, okay? And that's a good context. Um, if you're going to describe somebody, describe them as a loving person. You know, my mother was a loving person, or my father was a loving person. You know, that's a good context, and it's a good word. Um, so, now, loved, uh, love can come a couple different ways, you know. When I was a boy, I loved her. She was such a good actress. Or like here in my sentence, I have always been loved and cherished by my family. So loved is a loved is powerful like that. You know, you know, when I said, Oh man, I loved her. When I was a boy, I just loved that actress. And that means you just really, really did. Um, or, I always knew my father loved me. You know, things like that, okay? Uh, now, the word lover, if you use the word lover, uh, that means you you need to have one. <laughs> you know, like, oh, look over there. That's my beautiful lover. That's my girlfriend. She's my lover. Uh, so, uh, when you use that word, you need to make sure that either you have one or the person you're talking about uh, has a lover. Uh, and like here, uh, uh, where was it? She is her lover's biggest supporter. All right. Uh, so, there's a good way to use lover. I, was, I used to always be shy to use that word a long time ago. Lovable, no. Lovable is really good. Like uh, I could say something like, "Man, I have the most lovable dog in the world. He'll just lick your face and wag its tail. It's such a lovable dog." Uh, or some people think that I am very lovable. My students always said, "Oh, teacher, you're so lovable." So, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But lovable is really good um, to, you can describe, you know, if that person is really friendly or if you know them really well, you can always say, oh, man, that guy, he is just lovable. Everybody just uh, adores him, okay? Uh, so lovable. Now, lovely, you could say, like, lovely, you go, oh, see that girl over there? Isn't she just lovely? All right, so that's the beauty part of it. You know, man, I, I really think.
think she is lovely. Uh, but you can also, instead of pointing at somebody, you know, you can say, oh, what a lovely day. Isn't it a lovely day? Not a cloud in the sky. It's not hot or it's not cold. It is a lovely day. See, so there are some more ways to use lovely. Uh, you describe someone or something. In this case, I was describing the weather. I was describing the girl, how lovely she is. Uh, so you can put that one to use today. You can say, oh, man. But you might not, if you're a girl, you might not say, oh, that boy over there is lovely. Well, you could. You could say, that boy is really lovely. You know. But you might find other good adjectives to use uh, for a man. But lovely, I guess we'll, we'll take lovely. Uh, um, now, the word lovingly, if I say lovingly, that's an action that a lot of times, you know, like right here, uh, she lovingly kissed his forehead before leaving. Lovingly. That means very tenderly, very affectionate. So, uh, lovingly. Uh, I lovingly read from my book to you students. Very lovingly. Uh, there is, now I don't, well, and you know, and I'm a writer too, but I don't say this very lovingness, uh, but it's a word and, and it fits in our context today. The lovingness of his grandparents can be seen on his face. Right, now let me repeat that. The lovingness of his grandparents can be seen on his face. So there's another love word. Uh, here's another one. It's called lovesome. It's L-O-V-E-S-O-M-E, -E, lovesome. And we had a lovely and lovesome evening together you probably won't use that very much unless you're writing but it's there um, there's a word called uh, it's hyphenated lovey hyphen dovey um, and, uh, and like in this sentence right here they are too lovey dovey to take seriously so if they're lovey dovey these two people are lovey-dovey. They're just like uncontrollably in love. They're so in love with each other. They act silly, lovey-dovey. And that's kind of what that means. It just you're, there's so much love. It's almost uh, it's almost funny. Okay, it's like overboard, almost too much love. All right. Uh, then there's also what they call loverly. Uh, L-O-V-E-R-L-Y. Uh, it was mesmerizingly, it was a mesmerizingly <laughs> loverly sight. Uh, you will probably not use that much, that word very much, and you can tell that I haven't used it much. But when I look for these things, I just try to, I try to find stuff that I don't know about. You know, and I, I mean, I'm a teacher, and you would think, oh, well, the teacher has seen everything. No, I find stuff new all the time, and that's what makes this exciting. All right, now let's move on to hate. We're going to go to hate. Now, as you know, hate is an emotion that can be expressed many, many ways, but there's a difference between hate and anger. Okay, don't, don't confuse hate and anger, because uh, uh, if you hate somebody, it can last uh, a long time, and you might not be angry at somebody, but just a little time. And there's, there's different words to describe them. Uh, but now this one here, I got, I broke it down just a little bit. If we use hate as a noun, I might say, I have a deep-seated hate for this person. All right. Now the phrase in here, deep-seated, means it's big, it's giant, it's deep-seated. I have a deep-seated hate for this person. That just means you just don't like them uh, at all. Now, as a verb, hates, 
like she hates her job or he hates going outside. He hates it, you know. I hate tomatoes. I don't like to eat tomatoes. So, or maybe she hates tomatoes also. Uh, adjective. Yeah, now this is a good one. Let me read this sentence a little bit because there's a couple other words you might want to know. All right. She has a hateful attitude and belittles those around him. Okay. Now remember, we're, we're talking an adjective here. He has a hateful attitude and belittles those around him. Uh, now, if you belittle somebody, for you that don't that do not know this word, if you belittle somebody, you make you make them small, or might make them feel small, or feel inferior. So that's belittling. Uh, so there's another good vocabulary word, and it's free. <laughs> uh, as an adverb, she speaks hatefully to that man or she speaks hatefully to her ex-boyfriend hatefully that's going on right now that's a that's a that's strong if you think hatefully speak hatefully feel hatefully those that's really strong hate is a strong emotion so always be careful you go oh I hate you be careful about that. Uh, as a gerund, I might say, uh, hating on people doesn't solve anything. You got that? If I say, hating on something, like in this case, we said people, hating on people doesn't solve anything. Another form as an infinitive you need to listen to this sentence okay I just can't seem to stop myself from hating on other people's success that's a pretty big sentence though but listen to it again I just can't seem to stop myself from hating other people people's success. So there's another good use. Uh, present participle here, guys. Uh, we've been hating on her since she got the promotion. So again, we've, we have, for the contraction, we've been hating on her since she got a promotion. Or the promotion. Usually if you get a promotion, it's the, or the promotion, maybe it's the only one that you can get. Here's our last one, as a past participle. He had been hated by many people since he revealed his true intentions. Right, that's a lot of sentence. But the main thing is, he had been hated. He had been hated on by many people. Now I could just stop right there. He had been hated on by many people. So, love and hate are powerful. They can be complex, and they can be fun to use in English. So, reading, speaking, writing. To love and to hate can be very big. So now, we will talk to you a little later, and I hope you enjoyed me explaining some things, okay? See you later. Bye-bye.